Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 11, Episode 85. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazor, SteelersDepot.com. Glad you guys are back with us for this Friday show, Steelers Nation. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing better now that I had the first cup of coffee in me this morning. I had to go to the doctor this morning, and uh, because of that, I uh, haven't been able to put anything but water in my body in the last 12 hours. So I was not, I was, I've, I've been very grumpy this, <laughs> this morning up until about 15 minutes ago when I started to get the uh, the liquids put back into me that I need. All right. Well, I think what will make you happier today is talking about Ben and the cap and all things I know that are near and dear to your heart. Let's start uh, with just some, I guess these were new comments, these comments that I had seen before, kind of stuck in the back end of a Steelers.com uh, article, but Art Rooney talking about Ben and his future with the Steelers and really nothing groundbreaking there, but just reiterating really saying that they believe Ben played at a high level in 2020, that he can still play at a high level and that really the obstacles in bringing him back have always been about the financial side of things, the salary cap side of things, not Ben's ability or performance. Really things that I think we've explicitly said even before Rooney's statement the other day announcing that he wants Ben back. But uh, those are Art Rooney's latest comments. You can read them over on Steelers Depot. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, probably, None of which are surprising, just kind of, you know, it seems like more extended thoughts from Art Rooney the second there. Boy, now that we're we're seemingly past the uh, the speculation stage of whether or not ben, Ben's coming back, the uh, the speculation about the contract, uh, how his contract is going to play out, is, is is seemingly just as bad, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, there are hot takes all over the place this week, and uh, I mean, look, we won't know until we know, right? Until the ink is dry, and 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 you know th- that kind of stuff there. But uh, uh, there's some crazy stuff. You got Jason Lock and Fora out there saying the Steelers don't really want to pay Ben $19 million uh, this year and that if they did, this thing would already be done by now. Uh, there's a couple other hot takes flowing, flowing around out there. I think about you know how how he's you know they're, they're guaranteeing, you know, uh, they're forcing his hand to take a pay cut here. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, you know, I, I, even Aditi, I think, got it right. Uh, would be absolutely insulted if the Steelers suggested mm-hmm. he take a pay cut. Uh, and, and I see that to be right. You know, look, $19 million. I know a lot of people want to look at how much Ben has made over the years and, and, and use that as part of their argument or whatnot or why Ben should take a pay cut. But 19, you know, when it all boils down, he's scheduled to bank $19 million in 2021. That's a very, very fair number. Across the board, they ought to be glad he doesn't have his hand out asking for more, quite honestly, because usually when you mm-hmm. have these kind of extensions, new money is part of that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, we'll see. And I, I, I think the one of the biggest things, and we've, we've obviously won't, won't spend a lot of time on this because we've talked about it quite, quite a bit here, is what's going to happen you know, in the 2022 uh, year, uh, especially, well, two things, you know, how, how are they going to set this uh, thing up? It would be advisable, really, Alex, not to have this thing void right after the 2021 season, right? You know, because uh, especially if you're wanting to take the, 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 the Drew Brees route on this and thus kind of get some dead money split between 2022 and 2023, if you just make it void right after the 2021 season, well, then you're going to be forced to whatever, you know, whatever remaining proration is out there. Mm-hmm. automatically becomes dead or, or what you can do is, is is put in you know some sort of base salary in that slot let's say it's 25 million dollars and as we've kind of hinted a few times if things go absolutely phenomenal uh blows people's minds fountain of youth you know uh, ben looks great 
uh, at, at 39, wants to play one more year at 40, and the Steelers want him back, and we're having some of these same ad nauseum conversations <laughs> a year from now. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's already done, and, and and you can go from there. So I, I one of the most interesting aspects of of, of, of this contract you know, extension, if you will, will be how the 2022 Mm -hmm. year is set up. I'm almost positive that I'm going to be right in the fact that Ben's going to get that $19 million this year and all but $1.075 million of it is going to be turned into a signing bonus. Uh, The only question really is, is it going to be two-year extension, three-year extension, four-year extension, and and how uh, how will the 2022 year be Mm -hmm. set up? Yeah, I think that is the, the main focus. We know that Ben will be back. It's just the question of how they do it and what the ultimate conclusion is. Yeah, just a couple of thoughts and open-ended questions. With the Luck and Forward report, you know, I know he's saying, oh, it, it, if they wanted to just do a simple restructure, then it would have been done by now. Nothing about this offseason is simple because of the unknown of the salary cap. That's why this team has had to wait and why there was some level of uncertainty about Ben's future. And the Steelers have been... Uh, perfectly honest and blunt about that. Kevin Colbert has, and now Rooney has talking about they were trying to wait for more salary cap information before figuring out their next steps with Ben. Um, so that's the reason why they've waited, not because if they hated Ben that much, they would have just cut him and just not brought him <laughs> back. So I just a weird angle there from looking forward just kind of seems like, you know, he was one of those guys that was implying the Steelers didn't want to bring Ben back. Ben wasn't coming back and now Ben is coming back and he's trying to save face. That's what uh, my, my take on uh, what the uh, luck and forward is saying there. Um, Man, the point, these yeah, guys have gotten so bad. I mean, it's the, the, I, you've never seen decline of Western civilization the metal years, have you? No, I haven't. A- add that to your list of uh, of, of uh, <laughs> things to watch. It's a great, it's a great documentary uh, about uh, you know the rise of heavy metal and the Sunset Strip and and and, and all things like that. Uh, uh, I call like this make an appearance in that movie. Is there a camera? Uh, I, 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 you know right what? That, 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 I, I might have been around some of those cameras at some point. You know, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's the decline of the major media Western civilization. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two thousand. In fact, I think they call it the eighties. The uh, uh, the the decline of uh, the Western civilization, the metal years, and and I would call this the decline, uh, the 2020s, the, the decline of the major media, uh, 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 Western civilization. Now, uh, man, anybody listening to this podcast right now, uh, you can have your own <laughs> TV show <laughs> in, in, in moments. Heck, if I have, if I'm on one, or if I'm on on a podcast uh, like this, uh, surely a lot of it, you know, and my takes are a lot better than a lot of the major media's takes. Uh, a lot of you listening to this should have uh, within six months should have your own, uh, uh, you know, talk show or whatnot. I mean, it's just insane some of the stuff you and I have to wade through, and Matthew Marks as well too, uh, on a daily basis, and it just, it just blows my mind as to how much misinformation uh is out there from the major media point of view i mean everything from cap numbers and 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 all that kind of stuff it's just it's just you know no wonder the fan base stays so confused and i guess that's pretty good it keeps me and you uh uh uh, writing and, and and talking about it as well too but uh a lot of crazy stuff out there, and I have a feeling Jason Lockefeller is going to be very, 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 very wrong on this one. Mm-hmm. I agree. A lot of prisoner of the moment type stuff happening, it seems, media-wise. And I think we've just tried to be steady, calm, and consistent and look at the big picture of it. And that's what's kind of playing out right now, that Ben was always the most logical. Ben returning was the most logical thing for, for the Steelers and for him. Uh, but the two questions I wanted to ask, and you kind of touched on it, is I know we've spent so much time talking about voidable year extensions and things like that. And you kind of touched on maybe it doesn't void in 2022 what if it's a true two-year extension that doesn't void at all is that possible because i think maybe that that is a route that we haven't considered enough over the last couple of weeks sure sure i I mean it's very possible Uh, i mean because all all you're doing is just uh uh, change an aspect that you know it it, it, the only reason you know the the void would probably be more in there for roethlisberger than it would be because he's not getting any new money in in Mm -hmm. other words it gives him the ability to say that's it you know uh, uh, one, you know, I, I want to renegotiate now, uh, or else I'm, you know, uh, either this is going to void by a date or it's going to, uh, I'm going to be able to void it, you know, it, 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 with written permission, what have you. So, uh, I, I, I have kind of seen the voids, uh, the, the, the void capability there being there more for Roethlisberger than anything else, because let's face it, okay. they, if the Steelers didn't want it, want him back, they just cut him, right? 
you know, mm-hmm. uh, sure. and, and all like that. So the voids really are more more in there to uh, to protect the players. So could there could this thing wind up being a two, three, four uh, year extension with 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 no void language in it? Absolutely, it could be. Uh, but I, I think specifically the 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 most interesting aspect of this would be, uh, you know, and and, and you know. W- Here's the thing. Uh, would you have to offset the 2022 season with a little bit more of a, a better average, you know, annual salary for Ben or some sort of roster bonus triggered? You know, one thing you could do too is you could put in a base salary, let's say $25 million for for 2022, and then you could put a uh, roster bonus of let's say $10 million. That that times uh, that times out say the say reporting day or three days after the start of training camp or mm-hmm. something like that. That way, what whatever that roster bonus is though would probably have to be uh, after June first. But even so, if that roster bonus is going to be there and included. It would have to even if you got Ben to to do the Ben uh, the uh, the Drew Brees angle and and lower down his base salary this time next year to help out salary cap wise, well, then you'd have to have them also do the same with, 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 with that roster bonus. So you know, it, it probably wouldn't make sense to go that way. It would probably be better to go the route of uh, putting in a, 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 a base salary in there, a fair base salary. But the thing is here is that he's not getting any or shouldn't get any new money this year. And then thus you kind of wonder what, what would kind of be in there to maybe, I mean, do you, would you really expect them? Should something happen, I know people are about to throw their phones right here, but you know, should something happen that he winds up playing in 2022 for the mm-hmm. Steelers, you know, that's two extra years with no new money, you know, uh, uh, and, and you you would kind of wonder how how he would feel about that. I mean, obviously his 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 his, his average yearly earnings would drop considerably, uh, quarterback market wise. So that that's the only kind of thing that that you know kind of wondering about the 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 voidable years there mm-hmm. uh, being put in more to protect Roethlisberger, uh, give him a chance to make another money grab, if you will, uh, as as opposed to the Steelers needing that in there. Does that make right. sense? It does, and the cap hopefully would be better in 2022, um, so the Steelers would would have the ability to pay him more than, than the current situation today. And that was that kind of segues well into my next point, question, whatever you want to call it, is that you know I I've been very clear that I've have been and probably still am of the belief that 2021 will be Ben's final season, but it is not a foregone conclusion that will be his final season. And we've seen people like John Clayton and Aditi, and I want to make mention of it too that could Ben play beyond. 2021 his body feels good that's what he's been very clear about um you know he's if, if he wants to come back he's a very competitive guy I, I shouldn't discount the possibility of Ben playing beyond 2021 I wouldn't bet the farm but I mean obviously you would you would think and that's dangerous uh that mm-hmm. that that 2022 uh, or 2021 would be it but uh, there, there's, you know, every time he signs a contract, he usually comes out and says, I intend on playing out the contract. Uh, it'll be very curious if this thing is on. Hey, here's the thing that, that that's the most curious thing about the next, the, 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 you know, how, how this thing gets done. I mean, you would think that they would want to go ahead and extend him four years and get the maximum savings here, right? I mean, even in the event that maybe he plays longer than just 2021, don't you want that whole 14.34 million right now? I mean, uh, as opposed to if you look at what 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 Dulac had laid out there from from a two year ex- extension, what did we say? Almost 11 million dollars in in, mm. in in cap saved. I mean, we're, we're starting to it's starting to get a little bit more. Uh, 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 looking like the the, the cap's going to come in at 185 at most, at very most at this point. So what happens if it comes in 182, 183, or God forbid 180? The, the 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 new floor at this point. I mean, you would think you know this team would would, would like to have that extra, you know, extra three point whatever million dollars in there. So mm-hmm. uh, I just I, it's going to be hard to fathom. Why only extend Ben two years instead of another, uh, instead of four years, even though you probably wouldn't expect him to play 
past this year when you can get you know the 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 extra cap savings and people say well it's because of the dead money dave well i mean is there if 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 you, if you can use that extra money this year what's the difference of adding another 3 you know the other 3 million dollars on the back end as potential dead money especially if you go the route of the 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 Drew Brees ejection ejection seat plan whereas you know, you know, you take the small dead money hit in 2022, and then whatever's left over is, is dead 2023, two mm-hmm. years after Ben's gone. So uh, that's been the most curious thing. I've, I've, I've kind of, I had my eyebrow brows raised uh, since Dulac had to report the other day about them probably going to do just a two-year extension with Ben as opposed to a four-year extension. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't have a great answer. Maybe in their roadmap of just their cap layout, they figured that's all the money they need to get out of Ben to, to make things work based on their projections. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's – and I know that Ben has been very clear that he wants to work with the team in any form or fashion. Maybe Ben doesn't want to do a four-year extension of any sort just because of some personal thing where he wants to theoretically uh, theoretically at least play out the contract the way that you j- had just mentioned a moment ago. I'm not sure, but um, it still would save a good deal of money even on that two-year extension. Extension, right, still clear up. I think you said about twelve million dollars, which is still significant cap space. Yeah, I mean, almost eleven, right? What wasn't that the report? You said eleven point nine five. Was that what I wrote? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. If, the, if that is indeed the plan, the result of the extension would decrease Ben's twenty twenty one cap charge by eleven point nine five. Okay, so it'd be eleven point nine versus uh, on on a two year extension. I don't. I was at the doctor, so I don't mm-hmm. have my spreadsheets open here. But uh, eleven point nine on a two year extension and a four year extension would be fourteen point three four million. I've got that number memorized as many okay. times as I've written <laughs> that written that by now. Uh, so you're, that was your last tattoo, right? Fourteen point three. Yeah, I might. I mean, actually, I might get another one on Saturday. I'm thinking about it. But uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, when when uh, you know it, it, that, that's the only question at this point is, is how much they they cut off there. I mean, we're we're still in agreement that we would be surprised if Ben takes a pay cut of any kind, right? Of that nineteen million yes. dollars. Yes, and and again, if he were to, it'd still be con- in conjunction with that extension. But I just don't see a pay cut happening. You know, at this point, I put this on Twitter the other day. If if you did, if you got Ben to even take four million less dollars, meaning fifteen million, and and still did the uh, 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 you know expected him to extend two years on top of that, I mean the the savings was like what one point three 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 million in cap space this year. I mean. Why, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and, and you you get Ben take a four million dollar pay cut to save an additional one point three million dollars in 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 two thousand and twenty one uh, cap cap savings there. Uh, boy, a lot of these member members of the media would do a lot a lot better if they'd learn how the cap works, wouldn't they? But I mean, it took me years, so maybe that gives me a little bit of job security. You're not gonna put <laughs> me you're not gonna put me away in the uh, in the in the podcast uh, in the bloggers old folks home just yet, right? Yeah, I'm not going to old yeller you just yet, Dave. Not all right. yet. My, my um, wife, my wife might beat you to that, yeah. but uh, all right. <laughs> she's closer. All right, but, so but, but, else? real, real, real yeah, quick, you know, I, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen. Been playing past 2021, but I mean, stranger things have happened, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, I guess we leave it as uh, kind of a MythBusters plausible, right? Sure, <laughs> I did, like that. It's a good. Did you watch? Did you Myth, watch? Myth, I love. Myth oh, Myth. I love yeah. that show. Uh, you know that Grant. Uh, that Grant. Uh, I forget how you play. You know, he he just died recently. Did you know that? I did hear about that. Yeah, I watched the one. I just watched it on YouTube the other day. This is kind of morbid, I know, but they put like a a dead pig in a Corvette or something, and I, I, I think they I've could seen get the one. smell out of it or yeah. something. I don't think they could. Yeah, that's. Uh, Great show. Is that, yeah. That's that. They don't. They don't make any new episodes of MythBusters anymore, right? They're done. I, uh, I. I. I don't. I don't. I don't think they do. If they do, I think it's a different cast. I, didn't yeah. they? Didn't they start going down that road with a different cast or something like that? Maybe. But it, I don't watch. You know, like I said, there's not much that entertains me outside of uh, outside of football these days. Uh, yeah. But that was definitely one of those shows that uh, that I enjoyed for sure. All right, Dave, good segue from that into our next topic. Well, actually, to, to go back with Ben briefly here, because what is what is our actual evidence right now that 2021 will be Ben's final season? Like, What is what is the best evidence to support that? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, My evidence for that his was— His birth certificate, I guess. <laughs> that, and I think 
he whenever he told I think it was texting Bouchette saying about I think I can do one more year, but that okay. doesn't necessarily mean that he will do one more year or that he can't do two more years. So that was kind of it. But other than that, there isn't anything so conclusive that says, you know, obviously Ben has not come out and said 2021 will be my final season. And he's a super competitive guy. And if his body feels good, which by all indications it, it has, then there isn't really anything stopping him from coming back for 2022 at least. Right, and we'll see what the contract says. I mean, if something automatically right. voids, well, sure. th- th- there sure. you there you are, you know. And obviously, too, uh, what what you know, what path the Steelers take during the draft or whatnot. I mean, you would think that if if they did spend a early round draft pick on, on a quarterback, it would be to uh, get into action in 2022, right? You know, so mm-hmm. uh, that 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 might be kind of the you know, on top of it there. So uh, is, is there any hard evidence outside of what, what you just said that quote and all uh, and, and, and his age, you know, that that's about it. We'll see what, what the, what the contract says. Now, do I think he plays past, uh, uh, past uh, uh, this season? I mean, obviously the easy guess would be no, but once again, it's, it's plausible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave, speaking of cap stuff, and you had mentioned it, but just to kind of talk about it a little bit more specifically, concretely right now, the uh, NFOPA executive, uh, DeMora Smith, is telling agents to expect the cap to be around the floor of $180 million, maybe a touch above, but certainly, as you said, probably not going to be anything higher than 185 and honestly, likely comes in lower than that. So somewhere in the 180 to 182 range, probably where this number officially comes in at. So what's your take on, on that news? This is a big old kick to the, you know, what, you know, uh, I, 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 I take it and I took it personally, <laughs> <laughs> kind of my Jordan, my, imagine me <laughs> with a Jordan meme here sitting in a <laughs> chair and saying, and I took it personally. Uh, yeah, I, I do take it personally. I, <laughs> I, I, I really, really thought that this thing at worst maybe would come in at 185 million. Uh, it's it's not looking that way, you know. De, uh, Demore Smith, uh, NFLPA executive director, uh, held kind of a video conference uh, yesterday. Uh, normally, that's the kind of stuff w- with agents that is, and normally that kind of stuff, you know, takes place at uh, uh, at, at the combine. I think is more of an oh, you know, obviously COVID has interrupted, uh, you know, uh, how a lot of this works and all, but. Uh, in so many words, he apparently told uh, those agents during the video conference that uh, the union expects the 2021 salary cap number to be pretty close to the new $180 million floor negotiated by the NFL and NFLPA several weeks ago. Uh, I guess that would have been right around the uh, the uh, the press conference, or, you know, not not too long after the press conference at the Super Bowl there, and then that the 2022 and 2023 cap numbers might also be effective. Uh, uh, affected as well by the pandemic related revenue losses that result resulted in this year's cap reduction. Uh, he also told agents that the final cap of, uh, Final salary cap figure for 2021 likely will uh, likely depends on the outcome of the new TV contracts the NFL is currently negotiating, and apparently that's not going to swell right now. If you kind of read sort of the business journal aspect of it, uh, it seems like Disney's trying to hold hold uh, hold serve here, uh, and, and and probably doing it pretty well at this point too. It's not often that they probably get the NFL a little bit over the barrel, uh, so to speak. There, and it sounds like the two aren't really close on on uh, on the number yet. I bet the NFL is wanting to get this thing done at the obviously at the number they want. But uh, Demore Smith went on to say, even so, uh, uh, said the, uh, that. Based on the information the NFL PA now has, he expects the final salary cap number to be significantly lower than last year's $198.2 million. Additionally, future year's cap numbers might be effective because the league and the union have reportedly already agreed to borrow from them to help offset this year's reduction. So what does all of that mean? It means, well, for starters, it sounds like the 2021 salary cap number will be at best around 183 million. Is that kind of your feel on this? That uh, 185 million almost feels like pie in the sky right now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't tell you the exact figure, but 181 to 183 probably is where it comes in at. 
and obviously the number won't be lower than the new floor of 180 million. Uh, if the number comes in lower than 185 million, that certainly won't be good news for the Steelers, who are currently roughly 10 million over the 100 over a hundred and over an 183 million dollar cap number, uh, pending the whatever happens with the Roethlisberger contract there. Obviously, uh, whatever happens with the Roethlisberger contract should get them at least cap compliant uh, to a to a number of $183 million. Uh, how much lower will they be able to go from there? Uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, obviously, I mean, if you want to cut some players and, 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 and do some creative contract, things with with some uh, with some of these free agents which would be way 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 out of the norm for the Steelers uh, 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 when they do big contracts I mean you can make this thing work a, a number of different ways it's the beauty about the salary cap and contract structures and all but uh, quite honestly it would really be something that the Steelers are not used to doing uh, and especially if that number comes in below 185 million so it's not looking great. Uh, obviously, there you know, we still got a little bit uh, less, a, a little bit less than three weeks to go. But uh, Alex, I, 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 you know, I think within a week's time here, we're going to have a report. This is the salary cap number, you know, mm-hmm. and then obviously we'll be able to speculate a little bit, uh, a little bit better from there. I'm willing to bet the owner. You think the owners have that number yet, or you think they're a, a, a few days away from it? Yeah, I think they're really. I think they're all working off around the same number. I don't think anyone knows exactly what it is yet, but I think everyone is in that one eighty to one eighty five range. When do you think they actually get that number? I mean, here we I, are, a little less than three weeks away, right? Because Wednesday, mm-hmm. Wednesday marked the uh, three week uh, start of uh, the you know the, the uh, three week mark until the start of the new league year. So anyway, it, it's it's coming and it's coming soon. So uh, mm-hmm. uh, if you're a Steelers fan. At this point, you're praying for that 185 million uh, number. But uh, once again, I I, I kind of take this personally because I I really thought there was a good chance that at lowest we would see 185, and I, I mm-hmm. you know I thought there was a good chance this thing might stay flat when it does settle. Yeah. Uh, if we assume the you know just for, I guess that's for... me admitting I was wrong. So <laughs> go just ahead for... and clip this out of your. Uh, Clip this out and, and, and put it on your for for a ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, if we assume it is 183 million, uh, this, you said the Steelers are about 10 million dollars over that number as we see here today. Correct. For, that would be correct if, if we're dealing okay. with a 183 million number because they are they would uh, they're right now roughly seven million over a 185 million number. So subtract you know uh, uh, what what what's the difference on nine. Yeah, nine, ten million dollars, right around. In okay, there. and and so if they if they redo Ben and let's just assume it's the Dulac number that saves about twelve million, and then you do the two it deal or restructure, which saves you about what four million? Almost four, right? Yeah, so that puts you at twelve and four, sixteen. If they were nine over, so well, you got a couple million to play with there. Yeah, not much. I mean, obviously you could get something done in there, you know, and and, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, uh, but you know, there's still. There's still plenty of work on the back side that you're going to exhaust a lot of, you know, a lot of your work on the front side is going to exhaust uh, your ability to, to, to maneuver, maneuver much on the back side. You know what I'm saying? We talked about the Steven, uh, Steven Nelson uh, possible. Ex- Look, I mean, uh, all you have, you know, there's not many players that, 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 that now that Hayward has had his contract restructured. I mean, it's mm-hmm. to it. It's uh, uh, what, if you want, it, it it's Boswell, but I mean, I mean, there's not there's almost two million dollars that can be had in cap space by doing uh, uh, Boswell and Watt full full restructures. Obviously, we've talked about uh, 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 to it for a while now, almost four. So we're looking at what almost six million dollars in 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 uh, uh, what's remaining in possible restructures. You know, that's 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 mm-hmm. not a lot. And then right. uh, <laughs> I I tell you, yeah, yeah, Vince Williams might be very very nervous about right now right that's what i was going to say yeah so i have this team of being seven million under the cap after ben and two would get their deals done at 183 million dollar cap number overall um not a lot of money something but not a lot how much is cutting vince save again four or is it two well i mean it's, it's a little less than four because of displacement, displacement. right so, so three, it's like 3.2 
Went for uh, three point what, six sixty minus uh, whatever four million minus six sixty is. I just call it three point three. It would right. save. So then you're about you know a little more than ten million dollars under at that point. Yeah, I, I've said it before that you know that the two guys that are really going to be looking at the salary cap number to determine their future with Pittsburgh is Juju in in terms of can they resign him, can they afford it, and Vince in terms of will he be a cap casualty, and if there's going to be a cap casualty. I think the first person you start with, unfortunately, is Vince Williams. And then, you know, the other the other thing I wanted to kind of quickly cover here is, you know, people say, well, well, you know, can't can't they just, you know, pe- people talk in terms that they don't understand when it comes to contract. Oh, they could just backload or front load or whatever, and a lot of them don't even know what that means. But uh, uh, here's the thing: you could still get a guy like Juju done, but once again, you know, what you would have to do is you would have to. Uh, essentially agree to your second a, a full second year guaranteed earnings whatever that be roster bonus uh, plus base or whatever because you would ideally need to keep his his 2021 cap hit as low as possible and the way you keep that thing as low as possible is obviously uh, shrink the signing bonus or sh- and shrink whatever money uh, would be able to be given to him in 2021. Uh, now, m- most projections, uh, Juju's, you know, in a typical, in a typical uh, Steelers structured contract way, and assuming 17 to 17 and a half million is, is Juju's market price, it's going to take giving him a first year cash flow of twenty million dollars of of uh, and and that signing bonus plus base salary. That's that's if the Steelers do the contract the way they normally do it. If if you if you and even that produces a a a a, a first year cap number of around six million dollars. The only way you can kind of shrink that cap number is would be give him less cash flow in two thousand and twenty one. Uh, but the only way he would agree and him and his agent would agree to less cash flow in 2021 is if it's made up <laughs> mm-hmm. in 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 2022 and fully guaranteed on top of it. So, you know, that's the you know, and that that's going to probably likely be the only way around this for the Steelers t- in, in order to maybe get a guy like Juju done. So and that's not something the Steelers do. Second no, year no. Normally, guaranteed. normally for non quarterbacks, what they do is they give the player the signing bonus, and and that's really technically all the fully guaranteed money. Now, obviously, whatever base salary and roster bonus they should give in 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 that first you know, in that initial year is virtually essentially guaranteed, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you, you're not going to give a guy a signing bonus, sign him, and then 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 turn around and cut him, right? right you know. Right. Uh, at least you you know if something's gone horribly bad if you get if, if, if you're doing that so uh in so basically you could say that whatever roster bon and normally the normally roster bonuses in the initial year are normally done later in the year so that th- those can also be turned into a signing bonus uh we saw that with Joe Hayden way back uh you know uh, 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 when he signed his last deal because it was so late but anyway long story short uh Fully, you know, they would normally the first year fully guaranteed money is just it just the, the the signing bonus, whatever the base salary is, and if there's any roster bonus in that same year as well too. Mm-hmm. Uh, beyond that, the Steelers don't guarantee. Now they'll they'll put roster bonuses in there and 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 you know that are time specific to the to the start of the new league year, yada yada. But technically, they're not fully guaranteed. And if you're an agent and and you're Juju's agent. You're not going to just say, well, look, we're just going to put, you know, big uh, 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 to even out the cash flow over the first two years. We'll just put in a bigger base salary or, or, or a bigger roster bonus in year two. But, you know, before we get to that, if we want to cut you, we can cut you. No agent's going to mm-hmm. sign off on that. They're going to want they're going to want what would have been the cash flow of the first two years in a typical Steelers contract to yeah. to to show up in the first two years regardless and, and and be fully guaranteed does that make sense sure yeah if you're an agent and say okay we'll work with you and lower this first year cap charge but we're going to need something in return for that and that's going to be the, the fully guaranteed in the second year and so i asked that question about do the Steelers typically do this not to say that it can't be done but to say that's one thing to look for Knowing Rooney's comments of we may have to do business a little bit differently compared to what we've done before, given the extreme 
and on on unprecedented you know cap situation. So that those are the things we'll be looking for in whatever contracts get done. Right, and and going back to that, I mean we've we've tried to contextualize his comments about that several different ways, right? I mean we we just don't know until we get to the uh, uh, in, to the end product here. Was that meaning? Uh, it felt was, primarily was that, about Ben. To start. Right. Was that was that just Ben and and, and possible right. voidable years? I mean, what happens if this thing just ends up being a straight two year two year extension with Ben with no voidable years? Well, that's sure. the you know the only the only thing creative they've done that way is just not give them no new money, and that's mm-hmm. uh, it, wouldn't that be nice if you could do that with all players? <laughs> <laughs> the Steelers' new philosophy: no you know? new money. So so yeah. if that ends up being the case, I mean, what's left in the, on the table at, at that point? Point is that how they how they do non quarterback lucrative deals? So do do I think they're going to go that route? I mean, it was it, it would set quite a precedent if 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 they did. But on top of it, they could quantify it as saying, look, we had we, we you know it's not the way we normally do business. Mm-hmm. Don't get used to us doing this doing business this way. Uh, but it was all pa- pandemic related, yada yada. But on the flip side, people have been calling you know. Uh, really, I mean, the Steelers, the Packers, and, and and the Bengals are really kind of the only three teams that 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 do contracts the way that they do them now, you know. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I, that's going to ha- obviously have to come to an end, you know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, just just because I mean, look 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 what Kansas City did, you know. Uh, and able to lock up some guys this past season and, and not hurt their cap too much. Now, obviously, they had to guarantee some stuff, and they're 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 in a giant. I mean, you want to talk about being married to a quarterback? They are married to Pat, Patrick Mahomes uh, uh, at least for the next couple of years, which you know, obviously isn't a bad thing right now. But the way that that the, the rolling guarantees on that that it's a big rock that's going to continue to roll, right? You know, uh, mm-hmm. now I'm not saying that Steelers will ever get to that as that that you know. Look, it'll be a good problem to have. We're talking about the Steelers having sure. to do a a very lucrative franchise, uh, 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 big quarterback deal with a quarterback, right? I mean, that, that's that's mm-hmm. a good, good, good problem to to have in the future here. But I, long story short, you know, we'll see. One of the most interesting aspects that have intrigued me about this off season here is to see how the Steelers go about doing some contracts and specifically with maybe some of their unrestricted free agents. And look, we haven't even gotten to June and July yet. Uh, uh, and, and, and the big boy contract with, with, with TJ Watt, which I think we both agree when the dust settles, will come close to averaging around $30 million a year. And mm-hmm. being as how they, they might want that cap number of his uh, that's already in place of 10, $10 million to go down a little bit. Maybe they are going to have to get creative with him. You know, and, and, yeah. and, and guarantee more than the first uh, first year. But uh, it's just one of the things that if you can bet for sure if they go outside the norm, you and I will be writing and talking about it. Absolutely. One player who will not be getting a contract from the Pittsburgh Steelers is J.J. Watt. Uh, to transition into that piece of news here quickly, John Clayton saying the Steelers are not in the running for J.J. Watt. He named, I forget the teams, I think it was the, the Bills, Packers, the Titans. Packers. Uh, yeah, and Raiders as a as a sleeper. Right. Not now. Clayton clarified so those aren't all the teams. There could be others, but Pittsburgh was not one of the teams in the mix, which is no surprise. To listen to the podcast. We've been saying that uh, since Watt was released, essentially, but just to you know put a hopefully put an end to that, that conversation. Uh, JJ Watt not coming to Pittsburgh. They, that won't put an end to it until he signs That's somewhere. Pe- people are still going to say that he might take the. I mean, look, uh, and I think there's already been a report that he's received upwards of like uh, what fifteen million dollars mm-hmm. or whatnot. Fifteen, sixteen million. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the union would 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 uh, would crucify him too if he took the took to took the minimum amount i mean you know and that's another thing when it comes to ben roethlisberger Pe- people make it's easy for people to talk about other people's money ain't it you know mm-hmm. to say boy if i had 250 uh, million dollars this is what uh this is what i would do uh well you don't <laughs> mm-hmm. you know uh and the nfl pa would be all over Roethlisberger if he if he took a pay cut down to the to the minimum. They'd be all over JJ Watt if he took a pay cut down to 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 the minimum because that's not good for for union business, right? Yeah, it's not. Although there was a report that uh, what Demore Smith was telling 
players to collude. I'm not sure exactly in what sense of that, but uh, that's that's really being very very casual about that word. Yeah, what's good for the goose ain't necessarily good for the for the gander, right? Uh, <laughs> you know that they, they are a little concerned now that uh, uh, this thing's going to hurt some some free agent market values here. You know, mm-hmm. and you know because of that they, they, you know they're gonna they want each other to know each other's numbers. I think you right. know. Uh, in that kind of what the way you take collude, I mean, it, NFL, there's rules that the NFL teams yeah. can't do that, but there's no rules that agents. It's just kind That's of true. been an understood, I think. But uh, uh, and look, Demore Smith, a lot of people aren't happy with you know the union. I don't mm-hmm. think overly is, is is thrilled with the job Demore Smith has done. Uh, and I can't blame them. Uh, but but look, it's the the the, the union. The members of the union, i.e., the players, haven't done a good job. Uh, so I don't, I don't put this all on Demore Smith. But the fact of the matter is, they haven't done a good job negotiating these last two CBAs, and now they're trapped mm-hmm. in this one, uh, uh, you know, for 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 several more years on top of it. And and the, the you know, once you see these new new television contracts, uh, the, the union the NFLPA is going to say, man, we 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 missed the boat here, uh, and. Uh, you know, here, here's the thing, you know, Demore Smith tell, tell him that that's a sign that, uh, pulling out all the stops. We got to get as much money as we can. Cause we kind of messed up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, even, even with the pandemic probably discussions, you know, the, the CBA negotiations that they had, uh, uh, a little less than, than, than a full year ago as well too, which by the way, uh, it sounds like Demore Smith says that negotiation last year, pandemic related, uh, was was specific to 2020. So there is still CBA related pandemic addendums for 2021 that need to be worked out as well. So that's uh, mm-hmm. that's still forthcoming. Uh, something to look forward to this summer, which I know thrills everybody uh, as well. But uh, yeah, it is kind of. I think Matthew Marks, he didn't he just have a post to go up uh, talking about the. Uh, 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 the collusion uh, quotes from Demore mm-hmm. Smith. Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see how that works. That'll be interesting. Yeah, I, I think the top level guys will still be the top level guys. I don't think they'll be uh, as, as impacted as bad. Uh, I.e., I think Juju will be fine. I think you know some of these other ones across the league will be fine as far as getting their market values. It, it, it comes in. Uh, where is that second group? How much less will mm-hmm. that second group maybe have to take than what their probably true market value is? And then obviously, you know, we could see a bloodbath here in the next three weeks, Alex. Uh, some of these uh, middle class, yep. older players, right? The the Vince Williams of right. of the world. Yeah, guys getting cut. And right, we've, we've already seen that begin and it'll probably just continue and as soon as that cap number comes in and it's known then i think you're just going to see the floodgates open of players getting cut as teams know their number they know, they know their plan and they're going to be working towards getting cap compliant right so uh going to be interesting uh to, to 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 watch play out here was your phone going on go ahead, go ahead. okay okay i wasn't sure um all right, Devin Bush, uh, you talked to Steelers Nation Unite yesterday or Steelers Nation Huddle. I'm not sure what it's called. doesn't really matter. Uh, talking about his rehab and says that all things are, are going well. He's on schedule with his rehab and hopes to be ready for the start of next year. He says, quote, I'm trying to I'm just trying to uh, try to get ready for uh, to get ready physically for next year, especially for camp. I'm just trying to stay positive about things. I'm doing everything I can possible to make myself one of the best players next year. Hopeful that uh, at the very least, Devin Bush will, will be ready for week one. Yeah, it, it sounds good. And he's like a couple of months ahead of Bud Dupree, right? Because uh, uh, Devin Bush was uh, injured his his left knee. What was that? Week six, week was six. it? Against yeah, the Browns. Six. And then probably not too, what was it, a week or so after it that, uh, that that he had the surgery there. So I think technically that would put him, let's see, November, December, January, February, uh, a, a good four months removed from surgery now. 
uh, another five months would put him at the, at the nine month month mark, which would put him right around the start of training camp, right? But but that's just the nine month mark. So uh, look, I mean, obviously, and at some point here, probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll get Dr. Mel back on and and, and talk a little bit more about uh, 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 you know recovery from from these type of injuries and time frames. But you know, usually nine months is kind of the minimum you would think. Uh, I know years ago Kevin Colbert used to talk about well we like your know, players to be a year removed and all like that. But I mean, that has been several years ago and, 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 and rehabs and the surgeries have obviously advancements have, have been made in that kind of stuff there. So, uh, at worst, I would still think, he, you know, may, maybe he doesn't do a lot during training camp and whatever, whatever preseason, if there is a preseason, I'm probably not going to expect a lot out of him there, but, uh, uh, you know, week one, I, I think it's very, very possible for for uh, for Devin Bush to be ready to go by then. Mm-hmm. And Bush also had an Instagram live earlier this week showing him working out in a pool, just one step in the rehab and recovery, but making strides. And young guy working hard. Hopefully, he'll be ready to, for week one. I suspect he'll be ready for the start of the season. Right. Uh, I, I would too, barring barring some sort of uh, setback, and and obviously uh, even. Uh, uh, go back. You'll fight. Uh, Banner has a five week head start on him, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, as well too. So he should obviously, assuming he gets signed, which we would expect that to happen here, uh, pretty soon. Uh, the only one really to kind of to question about, and he probably not, you know, We'll see if he's a stealer. I kind of I don't see how they're going to make it possible. But uh, Bud Dupree uh, is obviously several weeks behind Devin Bush because of his injury happening in some some point some point in December. But uh, uh, while while Bud Dupree is still a member of the Steelers, him and Devin Bush almost are, uh, Devin Devin said those two are 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 rehabbing together every day right now. So mm-hmm. that that that's good news there. Yeah, it's good for both guys just to be with somebody to kind of push each other and, and all that. And yeah, Banner's back running right now, and so Bush probably could start. I don't mean obviously everything's different case by case, but Bush probably starts running in a couple weeks. Yeah, I would think if you're running in the pool now at this point, right? Mm-hmm. You know, probably that, that that's how that thing graduates there. But right. uh, I only play a doctor on Twitter, you know, and <laughs> groin, groins are my specialty. Groin specialist. Speaking of uh, camp, I do want to mention in Art Rooney's comments today talking about Ben and all that. He says, quote, as we sit here today, our plan is to have training camp in Latrobe. We still have a ways to go to get there, but I think there's a pretty good chance that's going to be able to happen. And let's hope he's right about that. Yeah, and Thomas Toll, you know, the uh, uh, really didn't uh, didn't have too much to offer in that interview with uh, Yahoo Sports. Uh, is is hopeful as well. Look, everybody's speculating on this right now, right? I mean, mm-hmm. uh, a, 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 as to what what actually is going to happen with with the season. I mean, just you know, and and, and another thing we just talked about with the collective bargain uh, 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 off season here, uh, you know, COVID related. Are they going to make all players uh, get vaccinated? You know, I, I bet I bet that's one of the things. And you know, e- even though most would probably agree to it, there's probably going to be a, a small section of players that say, "I you know, I don't trust it. I don't want it." Mm-hmm. You know, for for whatever reason. You know, uh, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how how that plays out. I would think that the that the league would would I don't know. Can, can, can you make something like that mandatory? I, I wouldn't think that they'd be able to, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see. Hopefully, uh, obviously, they would set it up where players, if they want to, and obviously mm-hmm. I would think a lot of players would take them up on, on that. But I would think also on top of it, I think Thomas Toll said as much that we're going to see the same kind of testing you know that, that we saw last season on top of it. And, and for whatever fans they do allow in, uh, 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 this year that obviously there's going to be, uh, mask involved and, 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 and that kind of stuff there. Right. Yeah. I don't know about mandatory vaccinations. If you can enforce that, my guess would be no, or at least there would certainly be some sort of fight or grievance from the, the union side of things. There's also just the practicality of getting all of those players vaccinated, uh, of which there are many. And then of course, when you have rookies come in and undrafted guys and all that, your rosters are, are huge. And so, you know, when we talk about NFL athletes, 20 something guys who are generally healthy, those will be some of the last people to be eligible to get vaccinated. So will those guys even be able to get uh, the shots by the start of the season? Maybe, hopefully, depending on how things go, you know, worldwide, but uh, there's no guarantee of that either. So there's just a practicality standpoint along with the can you enforce that mandate too? 
Right, exactly. I, I would think it would be hard to collectively bargain all players mandatory have to get vaccinated. I, I just, you know, I, I, I don't mm-hmm. We'll see. I mean, yeah. uh, we'll see. Rooney did say the last thing on him. He says, quote, we're still hopeful we're going to have some form of offseason program, and it's probably not going to start on time, and then says it's important to have it. So that's an inter- interesting comment. I wonder what that means in terms of having an offseason program, which would suggest OTAs or minicamp of some sort. We know the union's kind of against that, but also Rooney's saying it might not start, or probably won't start on time. Interesting comment there. And I would think that that's something that has to be collectively bargained as well right now, right? And, you know, there's all this talk, too, about still about the 17 game season and and maybe that resulting in one less uh, uh, one less preseason game. Yada, yada. I mean, there's still we're going to be we're going to be busy this offseason, Alex. Mm-hmm. Hope you like my new show. A lot of it coming. <laughs> All right, Dave. Anything else you want to talk about, or we can get to some read emails and close out today's show. Uh, let's see. Did we? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we got most of it here. So why not go ahead and go the angle of the email machine here? And that means starting with uh, Thomas Lindsay on Big Ben, Dave and Alex. I hope this email finds you in good spirits during the years and years of listening to the podcast. Admittedly, agreeing with ninety nine point nine 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 percent of your informed con content i can't seem to get my head around this one you guys always talk about players ceiling and floors in relation to performance and development big ben if you take out the hall of fame uh, reminiscing of yesteryears what do you think his is his actual ceiling for the upcoming season by keeping him on way past his sell date is this not one big ego scratch for him and another nostalgic but wasted trip down memory lane for the Steelers. This guy was a franchise legend, but now he is less accurate airing out bombs. Uh, in fact, his full throwing motion has changed after the surgery. A statue who won't risk quarterback runs or even quarterback sneaks. A quarterback who is uncomfortable in play action. Definitely more injury prone at the end of last season. Shows dodgy knees. The undefeated father time. Let's see, the undefeated father time has not only caught up and passed him, but is in a process of lapping him, not being dis- disrespectful, but surely nobody can seriously think another year older Ben can deliver a Super Bowl. If, if any ser- serious consideration of Mason Rudolph can be done this year, then Big Ben can't be there or else we're going to get uh, uh, to the end of another wasted middle of the road, not knowing Mason, blah, 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 get get playing Mason, uh, evaluating Haskins. So by next year, we know exactly where we stand quarterback wise time to grow a set of balls. Thank big Ben, blah, blah, blah. As for other teams, I don't, uh, uh, Tam, this is from, uh, uh, Tam Lindsay, Thomas Lindsay. Uh, I don't know how this relates to what, what Alex and I have, have maybe said wrong here. Uh, well, I think we both we both wanted Ben back, and this Thomas obviously does not want Ben to return. I, it, it was more from an aspect too; it was the right more than more than wanting him back being the right thing, the the, the correct move in all this, as based on the 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 team's philosophy. A lot of people missed that aspect of the team. Obviously, the motto, the mantra, if you will, is every year is a Super Bowl year. You know, every year we're striving to be uh, to to uh, uh, to win the Super Bowl. And if we are to believe that is the mantra, then the best way to potentially reach that goal is for Ben to come back. Well, I think that's Thomas's point of the teams hanging on for sentimental almost reasons. but but how is that still, different from 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 calling calling us out on the end of it well you on a personal level you're happy that ben's returning right i think you've made that pretty clear i'm 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 happy from the aspect of because that's what that that's what the steeders have subscribed to saying that this is a super bowl that they believe right. every year is a super bowl year but if you were running the Steelers, if you were Kevin Colbert, you were going to bring back Ben. Or at least that was that based would have been on all the, based on all the variables. Yes. Okay. Well, that's what he's saying. He this Thomas obviously, if he was running the Steelers, he would not bring back Ben. He would say, "Thank you, Ben. We're going to move on." That that's where he's saying the disagreement is. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, look, we, to, we 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 get we get all the sides of this, right? We get mm-hmm. the arguments. 
Right, the article I wrote, which is Thomas's point, the only reason to, to move on from Ben was if you really wanted to see what Mason Rudolph could do as a full year as a starter. That was like the number one reason to move on from Ben. From Now, for me, that's not a good enough reason to do that because I don't think Rudolph is the future. Um, here's where I come in on Ben. The reason you bring him back is, A, he gives you the best chance to win right now. Now, I've been pessimistic about this team's odds and chances going forward, but there's no debating that Ben still gives you the best chance to win right now. He's your best option in 2021. And, and maybe more importantly, Ben's return shouldn't prevent this team from addressing the future at all. You can still draft a quarterback. You can still trade up for a quarterback if you really wanted to. You can still plan for the future even if Ben comes back. So bringing number seven back does not stop this team from investing in the future of the position if they want to. Um, at least it shouldn't. And so that's why I'm fine with Ben coming back. Okay. Where, where 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 would you rank Ben at uh, in in uh, AFC North quarterbacks? Yeah, I saw the uh, was it LT and Willie McGinnis were ranking right. him yesterday. Uh, I think it's fair to to rank him the way they had him ranked of of Lamar one, Baker two, Ben three, and uh, Burrow number four. Now I don't know if there's a big I don't think there's a big margin between say Baker and and Ben at two and three, but considering the career arcs, Mayfield's on the rise, Ben is on the decline, and Listen, just go off the playoff game itself. You know, he was better that game. Um, it, it, it's it, it'd be a little homerish to say that that Ben is definitely number two over Baker. All right. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's hard to put. You know, it's hard to justify putting him at one. Obviously, I, I think where the, where the conversation is is is, is putting him at, at number two. Look, uh, t- uh, Tam, thanks for the email. You know, we we get all the arguments here, but you know, uh, a, a lot of what went into my decision making in this is just knowing. The, the 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 organization's mantra, knowing all the facts involved, the cap situation, and all like that. That to me, you know, on my end, this thing was easy to predict way back as far as August, as long as Ben's arm didn't fall off, you know. Uh, and you know, and, and that goes with the contract as well too. Now, obviously, the uh, uh, the pandemic and the cap number has made that a little bit more dicey in here. But and, and and obviously, if you could save a lot more cap money, other than you know, uh, if they weren't up 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 against it, or if they were closer up to, to up being up to up against it than they actually are, I mean, th- there's obviously arguments that that can be made in there as well too. But but long story short, I think the team honestly believes they can compete at least for the AFC North title. Uh, with Ben back, and then take their chances from there, and that's why they went made made the decision to bring Ben back at nineteen million dollars. I agree. Uh, let's see. Philip Garrow has some hate mails. Dave requested. Hey guys, this is actually not hate mail. Ha ha! I just get a kick out out of Dave specifically requesting listeners to send <laughs> some hate during. So it's a bold strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it plays out. Uh, but to answer Dave's question on Ben's contract, I would say that generally speaking, not not you guys specifically. What has frustrated me is that the narratives have has has worked off the presumption that. 2021 is necessarily Ben's last year. I'm not convinced that it will be, and I would be shocked if Ben would be willing to make that decision definitively right now. Good point, and I think you and I just kind of addressed mm-hmm. that, Alex. He says, I tend to think that Ben's unwillingness to commit to 2021 as his final year is part of what's causing the holdup in finalizing the extension. He, uh, he goes on, right, I'm not advocating for Ben to play longer, let alone with the Steelers. It just seems that the possibility has not been off and considered in the overall discussion, particularly in the national media. And then he goes on to write, however, comma, Dave, no one has read the crystal ball better than you. Your analysis of the situation is all, as usual was way out in front of any other source or outlet, including those who work uh, as reporters for your team. You've been talking about the voidable years, extensions, uh, loaning before any, by anyone else. And I've noticed that perhaps some other media and sites have borrowed, quote unquote, borrowed your work. Maybe better not to read this on air, but cough, cough. I'm not going to read the rest of this. I'm, I'm going to be nice here. Okay. Uh, keep up the great work and uh, uh, best to you and your health, Dave. Phil in Phoenix. Uh, he's out my way here. Phil out in Phoenix. All right, I appreciate that email, uh, uh, Phil. Uh, not a lot of hate in there. Uh, I don't. I, I didn't take any. Uh, Alex. Yeah, no. Uh, that's why I wanted to talk about those two points that Phil made about you know maybe this won't be voidable years. Maybe twenty twenty one will not be Ben's final season. I think it's at least worth mentioning that. And so 
Um, I don't have a whole lot to add to it because I'm sure Phil has had those questions and comments addressed based on the first half hour of today's podcast. But yeah, I think those are two things we shouldn't forget in this process. Uh, Deshaun Campbell writes in, Sup dudes, I have my opinion and, and I have a suggestion. I think you guys nailed it on the head when it comes to Ben. I do feel you guys are somewhat open to seeing the future uh, of our quarterback position. Uh, that's part one. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, however this thing would have went this year, Hey, we would have got a night, you know, Alex and I still would have enjoyed the ride. You know, uh, we, I don't, I don't think Alex was uh, ready to walk out the door or anything. At least I hope not, uh, <laughs> uh, had, had, had the decision, uh, or, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with the draft, you know, and, and, and what happens there. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they finally get from point A to point B uh, at, at, at the quarterback position. I mean, obviously, Ben's not going to play forever. Uh, you would think, you know, one, maybe two more years. I don't know. Maybe we'll have this same conversation ne- next year, Alex. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, he goes on to write, but a lot of times I feel you guys kind of want to ride this old horse out, even if it does risk another season, early season ending. If we all believe the Steelers can no way, shape, or form beat Casey or Buck, Buffalo, what's the point of having him still on this roster? We, I, Deshaun, we get that side of it here. The problem is the Steelers don't feel that. So we can sit here and complain and complain until the cows come home. There's no way this team's going to be able to beat Buffalo or Kansas City in 2021. So why in God's name are they bringing bid at? We we could we could make that the argument right now. But what what will it change? Nothing from a reality standpoint. Right. So you have to you have to have your objective side coincide with what you think the mentality of the organization is and then move forward. And that's kind of I, I hope evidently I've failed miserably at, 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 at putting that out there right from the get go with, with all this Ben talk. It's not so much me wanting to ride this old horse. Uh, as it is that I think that the organization believes that riding the old horse gives them the best shot at winning a Super Bowl in 2021. Yeah, which it does. Now, how good of a chance that is is certainly to be debated. I don't want to say there's no chance they could beat Buffalo or KC. They obviously would not be the favorites. They'd be pretty significant underdogs. But again, my standpoint is, with Ben, you can still make the playoffs. You can still win the AFC North, and once you get in there, who knows what happens. Maybe you don't even face KC or the Bills for whatever reason because of injury or they get upset or whatever happens. Uh, this was a number six seed back in 2005. No one thought they could go the distance, and they did. I'm not saying that will happen in 2021, but you never know. Uh, that's a playoffs for you. So, um, my, again, my standpoint is Ben still gives you the best chance to win now. I don't think that's even debatable uh, in terms of other quarterbacks they could t- turn towards and – even if Ben comes back, even assuming Ben comes back, uh, you can still draft for the future, and there's nothing that, that would stop you from doing that. Uh, he goes on to write, uh, uh, my suggestion, please give OSU linebacker Baron Browning a look. I feel uh, he and Micah Parson have some of the same play style, but what makes him unique is uh, is also plays a lot of edge rusher. All right, so we have a couple more names to kind of kind of. Yeah, kinda... he's in our queue. I think Tom or somebody is getting him. All right, uh, Russ Obenstein, our buddy Russ. I think Russ shows up on almost everything we do, doesn't he? Doesn't he show up mm-hmm. in uh, the, the Facebook Live stuff? And uh, I think he's a longtime listener. I think he's very active on Twitter as well, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, uh, okay, Dave, you asked us to send some hate mail on what your views on Ben that ticks us off. He says, sorry, it's impossible to do because I agree 100% on all your views on Ben's situation. This is no fun. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I'm glad. This, this is a good kind of mail. No, uh, Alex, Alex wants some confrontation here. I don't uh, he, no told, he told me as much. Alex says, I, 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 think, <laughs> you're, I think your head's getting too big, Dave. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to see you knock down a few, few, few notches. Mm, Isn't that specifically yeah. what you told me? We, whenever we fought behind the sheets <laughs> last week, right? We went 10 rounds. Yeah. As always, you guys are right on point and better than anyone else. Enough said, Russ. Thanks for the email, Russ. Uh, just giving you a little Thank bit of hard Russ. time there. Let's, uh, Charles, uh, Charles Bunger writes in, uh, Steelers quarterback room for 2022. What percentage do you think that the Steelers have a whole new quarterback room next year? I see Ben Mason and Haskins all departing next offseason. 
Well, as long as Haskins doesn't do something to run himself out of town, he probably comes back because he is under contract. Well, he's what he'll be restricted for after the season, right? Uh, he would be restricted and have to be restricted tendered. And if you liked him, it, it sure. wouldn't cost you much of anything to, uh, to you probably to get him back. Right. Because right, you do the original uh, round tender, right. which would be at a first round level. No one's going to do that. Um, so, I mean, Haskins, as long as he stays on the straight and narrow, should come back as in some sort of form of profession, especially if Ben and Rudolph are gone. You want to bring somebody back from that room. Um, so I guess in that sense, the odds, I think, are relatively low that someone finds a way to, to come back, even if that is just Dwayne Haskins. Right, and that's where they, uh, that's the way I would answer it as well, too. Even if there's a good shot that uh, – now, obviously, look, I mean, if we get to the uh, – if, if Haskins does not make the 53-man roster for whatever reason, well, mm-hmm. then obviously the, the, the way the room looks not, likes now, it would increase the odds that, that uh, you know – those three, Ben, Mason, and Haskins, all aren't obviously back. Uh, but then, you, you know, if, if Haskins isn't on the initial 53, then, uh, then you know, probably a rookie that you drafted would be. So, Right. So somebody from that room will, right. will probably carry over. I, 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 I would think so. Right? But, yeah, I mean, will, will two of those guys be back is maybe a, a more interesting question. Yeah, that, that that that's a good point there. So we'll have to see what happens with uh with with you know obviously with Haskins and 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 Mason Rudolph here moving forward. All right, uh, let's see if we can get a few more slammed in here real quick. Uh, oh, where's one here? Thomas uh, Thomas Fortin writes in uh, Bud Dupree versus Juju. Hey guys, long time, almost from the beginner listener. Wow, you guys and everyone else are saying no way we can sign Bud. My question: What would a Bud contract look like coming off of a big injury, and how much more uh, than a Juju contract? He says he'd rather have Bud. Thanks, guys. I really enjoy the content uh, you provide. Uh, Toma from Calgary, Canada. All right, a. Eh? Uh, <laughs> uh, here's the thing. I, you know, the, the, the biggest holdup with, uh, obviously with, with getting something done with Dupree, uh, or several factors is he's coming off of an injury right now. Serious one at that. He's only a few months in, 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 in into the rehab here. Uh, you know, he would be absolutely silly to sign a long-term deal in my opinion, Especially if that deal is, say, under, I don't know, throw out a number, Alex, 17, 18 million per season? Yeah, something that would be well below his expected market value pre injury. All right. So, uh, in other words, you know, a lot of people are trying to tag his offseason value at about $10 million per season, uh, which I, 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 that's probably fair right now. Uh, for for one season though, uh, mm-hmm. he would be he would be nuts. So I mean, it'd be great if the Steelers could get him locked up on a three or four year deal at, or even a two year deal at ten million per right. But uh, I mean, that, what are uh, what are the odds of that happening? He his, his agent should be fired on the spot if he lets uh, Dupree sign for more than uh, for for ten million for more than 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 one year. The whole idea that it's ten million dollars. Uh, is the fact that it gives him a year to prove himself and, and rehit mm-hmm. the and, and reestablish his 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 market value and go from there. So the fact alone that it would more than likely be a one year deal with whom whoever he signs with, that also would be his cap number as well. So in the Steelers' uh, case, let's say it is ten million dollars for one year. How are you going to shoehorn a ten million dollar cap hit in the mess that they already have now versus maybe getting something done with Juju on a six million dollar or less? cap hit depending on how creative you wanted to be with his contract you have no creative leeway with bud dupree and his contract does that make sense right yeah i know that's my mentality is i think dupree gets on the market and tries to see if his value has basically been unchanged and if it has been depressed and his market value is lower than where he hoped it would be then you just take a one-year deal and prove it and rebuild and hopefully attack in 2022 so either of those options were dupree's value hasn't really changed, and he's still going to get $17 million plus per year. Doesn't work for Pittsburgh, and if it is depressed, his market value, and he has to take a one-year deal, that doesn't work for Pittsburgh either because, as you said, you can't move that money anywhere, and the Steelers won't be able to absorb that whole cap hit in one year. All right, uh, from Chris Lookhart, uh, say a, a kid like Justin Fields make it makes it past the top five. What 
what would be the price of moving up to six or seven to get him? Because I don't think the Eagles and the Bengals are going to draft a draft a quarterback. Just curious. I I would be willing to pay a lot because I like the kid. Boy, uh, who was it yesterday? Uh, 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 Cassidy. Cassidy that that uh, has uh, look. I stranger things that happen, right? You know, I, I guess uh, has Justin Fields falling all the way down to the Steelers at twenty four overall. I think uh, he has Fields as his fourth quarterback off the board in his first mock draft of of, of two thousand twenty one. Uh, it'd be quite a Christmas gift, I, or quite a gift uh, if he did. You're not. You're obviously not expecting him to fall that far, right, Alex? No, somebody made the comment that if it felt like Casually forgot to put Justin Fields in his mock and then realized at the <laughs> end and then just put him back in somebody somewhere. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. What would it take? It would take a lot, obviously. Because um, how many spots? Two, were, how many spots? That's 17 spots. You'd have to move up. He says six or mm-hmm. seven. Right. So he's yeah. thinking 17 spots. Yeah. Next year's first. Obviously, this year's first plus a second, maybe a third. I don't know. Some some other stuff in there. So it would cost. Uh, a good amount to go up for sure. Yeah, it would. Uh, guys, got, kid, kid, kids got some talent. He's very, very young too. Uh, on top of it, there. So, uh, yeah, I. From where I, I mean, look, I did I expect the Steelers to trade up as high as they did, uh, as much as they did to go get a guy like Devin Bush? I mean, that was that was a pretty significant jump, right? You know. It was, but I remember Kevin Colbert said he would not give up a next year's first to do that, okay. and he didn't have to. Um, and so would he do that? Now, would he do it for a quarterback? He might because it's a quarterback. It's, it's a different position of value, obviously, but um, it would be even more expensive to go up to six or seven than it would be to what pick 10 where they got Devin Bush. Daniel Sarich has a nice short one here. Uh, hey, guys, the Steelers evaluate quarterbacks in this year's draft. I think questions the Steelers should be asking is – is Mac Jones or Trey Lance better than Mason Rudolph? Do you agree? I think we kind of broached this topic a little bit already, haven't we? We did, and I wrote about that yesterday. So the two quarterbacks, Steelers and Steelers fans, should really be focusing in on are Trey Lance and Mac Jones and answering the question of are either of those guys franchise guys. Now, you may come to the conclusion that the both or one or neither are the guy, but those are the two names that are the most realistic options for the Steelers right now in terms of franchise caliber players. Um, Yeah, certainly if they're not better than Rudolph, then they're probably not going to be the guy. But also Rudolph probably isn't on your team next year either. So you just have to have that belief as well that this probably is Rudolph's last year with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, All right, uh, this one from Mark in Vancouver. A couple of – we've got some Canucks uh, uh, happening here. Uh, Let's see. uh, We we all obviously value our our Canadian listeners as well too. Mark says, I listened to today's show, so took the advice to send a message. I'm a longtime listener from Canada, though I do visit family in your area, Las Vegas, often when there isn't a pandemic. Looking forward to seeing Raiders Steelers in Vegas in the future. I love the show, and I think inserting Alex Alex full-time was a great move. Steeders deep on the podcast are the only Steeders coverage I need, so I thank you both for that. My only complaint is that the shows used to be very tight and on topic. 45 to 70. What was mm-hmm. it? Was it ever 45 to 75 minutes tight? Oh, yeah. Was well, it? there were times where it was under. I remember there were shows that were under an hour. Yeah. Mm. I don't think they ever went over like an hour and a half. I think those are kind of the max for the old shows. All right. Uh, On topic, 45 to 75 minutes while now they drag on, uh, drag out much too long. Some of the topics are repeated without need multiple times per week. And even though nothing has changed, I used to get very excited for an hour of the podcast. But when I see a two hour show with not much news with Steelers, I know that things went off the rails a bit (laughs) and it's rather a hard time committed. Alex and I had talked to, talked about that it's all about getting that guy dave to stop running his mouth so damn much so uh we're we are efforting that uh so with that uh you can follow me on twitter at steers depot <laughs> you can follow alex on twitter at alex underscore kazora follow the show at terrible podcast email the show the terrible podcast at gmail.com if you like what we do and you want to donate to the cause go to steers depot.com uh, hit the donate button up right navigational bar. Uh, you make a secure locate uh, donation that way. Also, if you'd like an ad free version of SteedersDepot.com, uh, hit that uh, ad free button up right navigational bar for twenty five dollars for one calendar year. You can have an ad free version of the site as well. So with that, I think we made it under a, an hour and a half today. Congratulations to me and Alex. As always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Alex. <laughs>